Hello everybody. Welcome back after Simcat 8. Uh, let's get started. Quick approaches. Uh, one of this is the second question. Number of non-negative integer solutions. Usually such questions are asked when the equation has a positive sign. Here there is a negative sign. Now we know that here both will increase, both will decrease. So both positive, both negative, there will be infinite solutions. And that is why the question says x by y is less than 0. x by y is less than 0 clearly means it's negative. It means one of them is positive, one of them is negative. We need the number of solutions where one of them is positive, one of them is negative. Not both positive, both negative. Okay. Luckily, the options, uh, luckily, we know that now 153 is a multiple of 3. 3 y, 3 is a multiple of 3. That means x must be a multiple of 3. So, we can start off with 0. When x is taken as 0, minus 3y is 156. And we'll have y is 156 divided by 3 with a minus sign. 153, 6 divided by 3 is 52. So we have minus 52. Y is minus 52. So at least we have Y as negative. Now if we try to increase X, Y will also increase. And we can have positive negative solutions. We can go on till a situation. If we decrease X, both will become negative. So we don't want to decrease X. We want to increase them. Now we know X will change in steps of coefficient of Y. Y will change in steps of coefficient of X. So x will increase by 3, y will increase by 7, it will become minus 45. x will increase by 3, it will become 6 and y will become plus 7, minus 45 plus 7, minus 38. This is not important. What we want is both should not become positive, both should not become negative. x will continue to increase and go on till infinity, but y should not become positive. So how many times? Now remember, this is not a valid solution. This is not valid. Now how many times can you subtract 7 from 52? We are adding 7 to minus 52, but it's like saying from 52, we are subtracting 7. So how many times can you subtract 7 from 52? 7, 7, 49. You can subtract it 7 times. This will give us 7 solutions. When we subtract it the 8th time, when we add 7 to minus 52 for the 8th time, x and y will both become positive and invalid. So there are 7 solutions. Simply minus 52 divided by 7 gives you a quotient 7. That's it. 7 solutions. Okay. So 4 liters is added to the original. Now original is something 4 liters is added. And the ratio becomes 1 is to 2. We can start with this. This is a very important thing. Let this be the original for some time. For some moments, let this be the original. We, I mean, not original, but we can think of it. We'll start calculating from here. So right now, we'll say that the ratio of milk and water is 1 is to 2. And after 40 liters of milk is added to this new mixture, the ratio changes to 3 is to 1. Water is not added, water is not subtracted now. That means water should remain the same. Why is water here 1? It should be 2. Because here it is 2, water should remain 2. Well, same of 1 and 2 is 2. So I can simply write the ratios as 1 is to 2, 6 is to 2. 3 is to 1 can be written as 6 is to 2. So water has remained constant. According to this, milk should increase by 5. Question says the milk is increasing by 40. Multiply everything by 8. So 818, 8, 2, 16, 8, 6, 48, 8, 2, 16. So we see that this is the resultant mixture where you have 1 is to 2. 8 liters of milk, 16 liters of water. But this is not our initial. The initial says to the initial 4 liters of water has been added. Here we have added 4 liters of water. Simply subtract 4 liters of water. So we'll have 8 liters of milk, 12 liters of water. This is your initial this is our initial mixture 8 is to 2 cancel out of 4 we have 2 is to 3 so milk is 2 by fifth 40 percent the correct answer to be entered was 40 percent that's it just this much okay stop here again if you want to read this question satish has bought a cycle from pune in a few days he sells it to his brother rajesh 
at a discount of 21% price of 6321. That means 632, sorry, 6320 is 79%. If I divide 6320 by 79, I will get the original price. Satish has showed it for 6320. This. So if I can cancel out, I can add two zeros, eliminate the decimal. And here what we need is a little bit of Vishwas. 632 must be some multiple of 79. To get the unit digit 2, I must multiply this by 8. So if I try by 8, 9, 8, 72, I get my 2. Remainder is 7. 9, 8, 56, 56 and 7 is 63. That's correct. So I can say this is equal to 8,000. Satish has purchased the cycle for 8,000 rupees. He has sold it at a discount of 21% to Rajesh. Now Rajesh's friend Kumar liked the bike and purchased it from him at a price which was 30% higher than the purchase price of Satish. Satish's purchase price is 8,000, 13% higher. We can multiply by 1.13 or we can find 13% quickly. 13 upon 100, mentally we can do it. 13 into 8 is 104. So 1040. This is 13%. So 9040. This is the price at which Satish, uh, Parsia, sorry, Kumar purchases it from Rajesh. Now Kumar added some features to the bike, investing an amount 10 equal to 10% of his own purchase price. Luckily, we have a zero. So 10% of 9040 is 904, 9944. That is the total amount spent by Kumar on the bicycle. Total amount spent by Kumar on this bicycle is option D, 9944. Okay, next, the eighth question. A shopkeeper purchases a certain number of articles at 100 each. 100 is a very good thing here and marks up by 40%. He sells away the articles at a 15% discount, good enough. He then acquires a new batch of articles equal to 10% of the original quantity. This is where we get our hint. Let that initial, because ultimately we want percentage. Let that initial number that is mentioned, the certain number, let this number be just 10 articles. The shopkeeper has purchased 10 articles for 100 rupees each. So his cost is 1000 rupees here. 140, he has marked up everything at 140, 40% above. And then he's giving a 15% discount. 10% would be 14. So 15% would be 21. He's giving a discount of 21. And he's selling everything at 119. He's going to sell one, one, 10 items at 119 and he's going to get 1190 rupees. So this is on the original 10 items. He then acquires new batch of articles 10%. 10% of one is simply one at 60 rupees. So his cost becomes 60. He has just bought one article at 60, his cost becomes 60. He mixes everything with the original. That means he's going to change this at sell this also at 119. He is buying it at 60 and selling it at 119. So his profit is 59 rupees. Here there was a profit of 190 rupees. Now there is a profit of 59 rupees, which gives us a total profit of 249 rupees. And the total cost now is 1000 plus 61060. 249 divided by 1060 and that of course we multiply by 100. This is the answer. We can still cancel out at 253 but we can leave it as 104, 2490 9, upon 106. So if it were exactly 100 in the denominator, this would give us 24.9%. But it's a little more than 100. So it will be a little less than 23. 24%, uh, it is 23.49%. We will get this exactly even if you use a calculator. But there is no need, it's just a little less, not a big error, a small change. So 24.9 would change to 23.49. It cannot reduce to 20 or 19%. So that's the answer, 24. You can you, you could have used a calculator also in the exam. 
2490 divided by 106 and you will have 23.49 percent. A very interesting question here. A circle AB is the diameter and PA is the tangent. So we have a 90 degrees here. Semicircle here. So if we again draw this, this is also a right angle here. Now this is 54 degrees. This angle would become 36 degrees. Now remember, whenever we have a secant, two secants, what is the angle theta between the two secants? It is the measure of the arc outer arc minus the measure of the inner arc by 2. If this is alpha and beta, theta is equal to alpha plus beta, alpha minus theta, beta by 2. Theta is alpha minus beta by 2. That's what is theta. Now, what is the measure of the arc AC? So, we have here a Q and uh, instead of a tangent, we have uh, two secants. We have a secant and a tangent. That doesn't change our situation. So, the outer arc is the arc AC. The inscribed angle is 54. So the central angle measure of that angle would be double of 54. We'll simply write 2 into 54. Ultimately, we know we are going to divide by 2. This is our alpha minus beta. The measure of the arc in the inscribed angle of the arc CB, the inner arc CB is 36. So it is minus 2 into 36 by 2. Ultimately, we know 2s cancel out and we have 54 minus 36 is equal to 18. So, this angle here is 18, the angle P. Angle at A is 90 degrees. So, angle at P would be the complementary of 18, 72. And what is required is the difference between these two angles, 72 and 18. 72 minus 18 gives us 54 degrees. The correct answer to be entered was 54. The required answer is 54 degrees. A very interesting question here. K books are to be arranged on a shelf. P shelves, there are shelves, P shelves, and each can hold exactly 53 books. So if you put 53 books on P shelves, the total number of books put up is 53P. And we are told that 32 books are still left out. So we have K is equal to 53P plus 32. Now, we are also told that K is a multiple of P. Total K is divisible by P. K is a multiple of P. So, if I just write K as P into X, we can have Px is equal to 53P plus 32 or 53. So, we can have P into X minus 53 is equal to 32. This says that P is a factor of 32. And 32 is a power of 2. The only factors of 32 are 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So these are the possible values of P. But the question now is interesting. What is the average of all the possible values of K? So we have six possible values of K. Sorry, P. We have six possible values of P. So accordingly, we'll have six corresponding possible values of K. So K, if I now write, okay, let's write here, K is equal to 53 into P. Let's say 1 for P plus 32. It could also be 53 into 2 plus 32. And we can similarly write 53 into 32 plus 32. So for average, we'll have to add all of these values and then divide by 6. Wonderful. So 53 is common. In all of these, 53 into 1, 53 into 2, 53 into uh, 4, 53 into 8. So we'll simply say 53 into 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 by 6 plus 32 into 6 by 6, which again simply gives us 32. Now, what is the total of 1 till 32? 63. Cancel out the 3. 3 into 2, 3 into 21. 21 by 2 is 10.5. Or we can actually multiply first. 53 into 21. Let's multiply 1 into 3, 3. 6 plus 5, 11, 1. Carry 1, 10 and 1, 11 and by 2. So we have 2 into 5, 10. Remainder 1, 2 into 5 again. Carry remainder 1. And we'll have 
5. And to this, we are supposed to add the 32. When we add this, we have 588.5. The average of all the possible values of k is 588.5. Read this again. Another beautiful question. What is the area of a parallelogram? What is the area of a parallelogram? We know that area of a parallelogram is based into height. Remember, this is the height. It's not the product of the two sides. Then we'll have a, b, sine, theta. So here it is, base into height. So where is our parallelogram? Here we have our parallelogram, p, q, r, s. p, q, r, s is actually a parallelogram. p, q, r, s is a parallelogram. We need the base and the height. Now this angle here mentioned is 30 degrees. AD is 15, sorry, uh, 15. So if I draw a line parallel to AD, I again have a 15 here. This is the 30, 60, 90 triangle, right angle here. So we have simple PS is equal to 30, 15 ka double 30. The base PS is 30. If I take PS as the base, now what is the height? The height is directly given to us as 8. HG is 8, so height is 8. So the area of this parallelogram is simply 30 into 8 to 140. That was the fourth answer option here, 240. 240 is the answer. A very, very simple way out for this question. Right? So keep working hard and stay safe. Keep preparing hard, focusing on all these things. Focus very well and study hard.